what is up guys how are you doing this is project 939 here bringing you another professor x cute gameplay and today we are back on battlefield 3 doing some conquest domination on donya fortress rocking out the lmg with the support kit the good old Pachenek, never let me down once and uh just basically spraying a prey and running through causing chaos and having fun while i'm doing it um okay so today i'm going to be doing a uh, basically what i believe to be the definitive guide to winning Conquest domination. That's quite a bold statement, but I don't take it lightly. I really do think these tips will help you. And my dog's barking in the background, it's kind of frustrating. But, you know, life goes on. So, um, kind of, my first tips are going to be how, like, kind of winning gunfights, I suppose. Now, what kind of made me want to do this video in the first place was, um, I went, I was trying to get the last sniper in the assignment, so you have to win three rounds of Conquest Domination. And normally I don't play Conquest Domination to win, I just play it to kind of mess around. Uh, but you really, and if looking back, I do lose it quite a lot. And you really don't notice that you're losing until you're actually trying to win, uh, well, in my view, personally. Um, but yeah, I was trying to win, I kept losing all the time. And what my tactics basically consisted of running around with an MP, MP7, getting kills, then getting killed. Uh, rinse and repeat. Um, then I kind of tried to change it up, you know, I didn't know what's going wrong. Basically, I kind of played it a bit smarter, and I, this is where the whole gunfight thing comes in. If you're playing it smart, then you're much more likely to win in gunfights, because you notice that most people in this run and gun, and, you know, most of this, if you allow them to, they will just run into your gunfire. And that is what you should aim to try and let them do, you know, if it, if it uh, is necessary, then sit back and take some shots at people, as I'm doing here. If it's necessary, then walk into a room slowly, washing corners, things like that. And, you know, I could just as easily run into there, maybe get a few kills, then get killed. But instead, you know, you want to play it a bit smarter. And really just watch your corners. And just watch everywhere, to be honest, because, you know, enemies can come from every corner. But, um, you know, don't go sprinting around, because you're going to see as I run up the stairs. I'm, I'm sprinting, and it's very hypocritical. This guy here is running around sprinting, gets killed very easily. I sprint in then I get killed. And that's a prime example of what I'm talking about, that's what you kind of want to avoid. And um, there's another good example of that in a moment which I'll point out. But um, now I'm going to talk about the class that I recommend. And I do recommend, believe it or not, the support class. Um, for the sole reason is that they get C4, which comes in very handy if you implement the tactics that I'm going to be talking about in a moment. But um, basically you can put C4 on the flags and it really does act as a backup plan, or like a or like a primary plan, if there's like three or four guys on the flag, and you know that you're not going to be able to, I mean, you might be able to jump down and kill them all, but, you know, if you do, it's going to get messy, no doubt. You see for the job's done in no less than a second. Um, you know, it's a very, very good way, but this is the whole sprinting thing here. Like, that guy was pretty ridiculous, really. He was sprinting in, had no spatial awareness, wasn't looking where he was going, ran straight into me, you know, I knew where he was the whole time, I just wanted to see how far I could, I could take it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, like I said, I do recommend the support class, for the sole reason is that they get, do get C4, which comes in extremely very handy when you're using the tactics that I'm going to talk about right now, but first I'm going to kind of use it in an analogy, and I'm going to use the whack-a-mole analogy, which I'm going to call it, now if you've ever been to a fairground or anything like that, you would have probably seen one of those like whack-a-mole games where you hit the mole on the head, whatever, uh, it's a lot of knockoff versions, but you get what I'm talking about. Now that basically consists of hitting something, and then another one popping up straight away. Now, if you were going to cheat at that game, what would you do? Personally, I'd block all the holes, and so they couldn't come up. And that is where, uh, it, it sounds super strange, but um, it does sort of relate to Conquest Domination, in that you would be able to capture flag, run around capture a flag, run around capture another flag, by the time you capture that second flag, you've already lost the other one. And, you know, this kind of just follows the whole analogy of, you know, knock one down, another one pops up. And that is what you want to avoid. This is where the whole putting something over the hole comes in, so it can't pop back up. I am, um, you want to play as the blockade, stopping it from popping back up. And it's starting to sound really ridiculous, but that, but in English terms, you want to defend one flag and one flag only. You want to stick on that flag for the whole game. And you notice for most of this game, I'm sticking on this flag, trying to defend it with my very life. And, you know, 80% of the game, I'm around this area. And um, I'm trying to defend that flag. And 80% of the game, we've got that flag. And that 20% is probably when I'm not there. And enemies are jumping in and getting it. You know, if you're there, then it's highly unlikely that they're going to be able to get the flag um, if you're an adequate defender and I'll get onto how to adequately defend a flag in a moment but I'd say it is my kind of mentality behind that is it's a lot 
easier to get a flag on a less linear map. And by less linear, I kind of mean maps like, I don't know, Cien Crossing, Caspian Border, Karg Island. You notice it's a lot easier to get a flag on that map than it is to get a flag on, like, Operation Metro, which is very, very linear. And, I don't know, I kind of want to take back what I said about Cien Crossing. That is quite a linear map, really. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot harder to get a flag on a map like Operation Metro than it is to get a flag on, like, Caspian Border, for example. And that is basically based on how linear it is. And, you know, these maps are tiny compared to those maps, but that doesn't mean by any stretch of the imagination that they're not, that they're linear. And, you know, I think that these are probably some of the least linear maps in the game, basically because there's so many ways of getting to point A to point B. And that is kind of why it's easy to defend a flag and i don't see why you wouldn't want to defend those flags like these this flag here you know it's got five entrance points they're all choke points they're very easy to defend from i can see all of the points from this kind of uh, balcony area and you know it makes defending it very very easy and you know you often find that the attackers they just sprint in like kind of try and find a corner to hide in while they kind of anal analyze the area you can like see them before they see you and that automatically gives you the advantage if you're defending a flag and that, i think these maps these flags are kind of designed to be easy to defend based on how quickly they'll capture you know you can capture it in 10 seconds and yeah, that is that is where the importance of holding a flag comes in because it's very easy to capture if no one's there and that's kind of where the whole whack-a-mole thing comes back in but i'm not going to dwell on that now how to defend a flag adequately or like basically adequate um I'd say, if you haven't played the maps before, then just stick to one area of the map, or jump into an empty server and kind of get and get to grips with an area of the map. Find a flag that you like. Now, by a flag that you like, I mean a flag that um, basically you can see. It's like, like I said, these flags are easy to defend. Most of them are in open areas. Now, you know, on this map, I always defend this flag because I've got this balcony here. I can throw C4 down and reset it easily, and you know, I can defend it pretty easily. And I know where all the entrance points are, and you know, it's not too hard to defend. You know, enemies often don't know where you are when they come in. You often know where the enemies are when they come in. So that does make it a lot easier to defend. And you want to know the map. They want to know the flag well, like I said, and. That will make it a hell of a lot easier to defend it. Now, you know, if you're if you've got this picture this way, if you've got this flag defended, there are two flags left on the map, and it really only does. I'm on my own on this flag for about for most of the game. Uh, well, I don't want to say most of the game, but quite a lot of the game I'm on my own, and I'm defending it because I've got this C4 and I've got this whole setup going on where I'm basically resetting C4, watching them come in, things like that, and it does make it like you. Know, maximum of two guys on a flag I, th I say a medic and a support guy that would be adequate to defend a flag and if you've got that flag defended there are two other flags on the map and the rest of your team are going to be on those flags and it's more than likely that they're going to be able to get at least one of them that means you've got two flags the enemy are going to drain tickets you're going to win and if you keep that for the rest of the game then you will win and that is basically the point of this video i suppose um another way of kind of defending your flag is to um if they do get the flag back, then it's not likely that they're going to stay on the flag too long. So it's often it's often better just to wait around and not jump in while they're still capturing it. Just wait for them to get it and then get it afterwards and then set up your defense again. But uh, that is basically the end of the video or the end of the time of the video I've got. I pretty much covered all the points I wanted to, which is surprising because there was quite a lot going on there. But I do urge you to try uh, out some of the tactics. So basically to sum it up in five seconds, defend one flag and the rest of your team will do the job for you and the game will play itself and you should do pretty decently and get a good kd i, got, I went 30 and 1 on that map yesterday god i wish i recorded it I'm kicking myself afterwards but thank you very much for watching if you found it helpful then please do subscribe but thank you very much for watching and goodbye